Hi, and welcome to my channel. And you may be asking yourself, what does a paintbrush have to do with cross stitch? And I will tell you. Um, today is um, October 20th, and I am supposed to be starting for hashtag 13 for Halloween, double double. And to be honest, a lot of people have done this prairie schooler pattern, and I really like it, but I'm not really a person who does a lot of this style. And so, although I really like it, and I like the black cats, I thought that I would change it up a little. I actually uh, taped an update yesterday, or recorded an update yesterday, and I promptly deleted it because I really haven't been feeling well. There's been a war going on here in upstate New York. It's been a mighty battle. I suffer from chronic migraines, and uh, although the sky is bright and sunny, and the Empire State Building is still standing. Um, and no ground has been up turned and trees are still standing. You would never know it from the state of my head. So I thought, thought it was better to delete the uh, stuff I did yesterday and start over. So today what I decided to do was to um, do something unique. And of course my clock is going to chime nine times uh, because it's nine o'clock in the morning and uh, traffic is picking up and it's a super, oh, my phone's gonna ring. Great. <laughs> See? All the demons on earth are going to go against me. So let me pause this and I will be right back because I am not starting over. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So what I've decided to do was take my paintbrush and I have a container that I use for water and it's clean water. And I've got some of my tie dye, fabric dye in some orange colors and let me see if I can pick some of it up and a couple of and maybe a black and then I have a spray bottle here that's got a green in it and then I have a spritz bottle that's just water and then just in case because I don't really want to spray water or drip water I have a clear watercolor pan. Um, so I'm going to put some watercolor in the pan and that's where this water, this old paintbrush comes in. I'm going to take this and saturate it. This fabric is dry right now. I'm going to use my handy dandy spray brush and I'm going to wet it down. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to put some paint out here. I'm going to color it up. I'm going to dry it and then I am going to Put double double on here. But I thought I'd let you watch my color process. Uh, and then I'm going to add my update video to this. So let's see. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to fast forward some of this or not. Let's see what happens. So here's my, I'm sorry, well, I'm not sorry. I mean, if there's glare, there's glare. Let me add a little water. And I'm doing this right on top of the fabric, so it uh, might be a little dicey. We'll see. So I'm putting a little water in the trays. I'm not sure how much I need. Wanging it. I am the queen of wang, let me tell you. So here's a little green. Some of it may go right onto the fabric, who knows. 
Don't know. Don't care. It happens, happens. Yeah, I don't really care. I don't really want any intense, intense color. I do, after all, want to stitch on it. Oh, and by the way, this I have a craft mat. Actually, I have two craft mats down on my table underneath all this. Plus, I have freezer paper with the wax side up. The white that's under there is freezer paper, just in case you're wondering. And no, I don't have gloves on. Could have gloves on. Don't have gloves on. We'll probably have some interesting colored fingers. Paper towel. Do have a roll of paper towels here. Don't feel well. So I do have a box of tissues handy too. Okay, put a couple drops of purple. Mmm, pretty purple. Pretty, pretty purple. A little bit of orange. Better shake that up. I had shaken the purple. I don't know if that's the purple I just made, but oh, look. See? Dangerous. Proceed at your own risk if you decide to do this, too. Proceed with caution. <sighs> shake, shake, shake. Up. Oh, this is the one I just made because it is still warm. Trying to get the top off. Oh, there it goes. See? Color. Ooh, color. Hello. And, hey, I am going to put a little black in there, too, just for fun. Now, because I've added the water into the pan, too, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um... I'm not sure how I'm going to dry this, if I'm going to iron it dry, um, hang it to dry for a little while, and then, you know, I don't know, do something else. Who knows? I always kind of fly by the seat of my pants, and anything you hear is just me setting things out of the way. My paper now is going in my trash can. And I'm going to get myself a new paper towel. I am going to... Oh, I've got all kinds of stuff around me. So, of course, I have very little working room. I've left to myself, like, three inches of working room. So, pardon me while I try to eke a little more room. I'm trying to push stuff aside so I can move that pan of color and not actually move it too far away so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so my piece of fabric, the piece is actually going to be with the border, um, 12 by 11. So, the bulk of it will be in the middle. And most of that, as you know, is brown and orange. So, here we go. I'll get my first thing I'm going to do is take my spray bottle of water. And I'll give everything a good mist. And right now, let me turn this around. See this, this pin with this little yellow tip? That's actually the top of my fabric. So let me turn it around. So bottom is for your benefit towards your bottom. And the top for your benefit is up here. So now I'm looking at it upside down. So I guess I just gave myself a challenge by making it upside down for me. Oh boy. And I think I have, yeah, there's a piece of lint on there. Try to get all my little foozles off so they don't get in the way. Good. So now I'm saturating it. 
so that some of the color will absorb in. Kind of like watercolor. Okay. So shall we play? Ah. And that's one nice thing, because this is coffee dyed. So um, I ha don't have that blank page syndrome. The one thing I do need to be a little bit careful of is I don't want it, well, I guess I don't have to worry about muddy mess. You know, because it's already got that brown thing going on. Kind of like that brown Easter egg. <laughs> it's already there. I do want to try to keep my brush kind of clean, though, because I don't want to contaminate my colors. I like this color, so obviously, um... So, in case you don't know Double Double, we've got lizards and skulls and frogs, a bat, the witches doing their potion with a cauldron, two black cats, a pumpkin, and flames. I guess, and snakes down the sides. So let me rinse my brush in my, my waters over there. Pardon my old crooked fingers. Kind of have witch hands. I'm going to take a darker purple. Let's see what the darker purple is. Yeah, it's a little darker. Not a whole lot darker, but somewhat darker. Don't ask me. I'm just, you know, I, I'm playing. This is what I do. I play. So, this is just me having fun. Now, I have a lot of colors in here. And you have to remember, I left myself three-inch borders. So, I've already exceeded the center of my design where I'm going to stitch. So, in reality, my snakes are somewhere in here. Right? Snakes. In there. Somewhere fun. Of course, the snakes are in brown in the pattern. And, let's see frog is up here in the middle. Of course, he's probably more up here. That's probably more the bat. <laughs> but I'm just playing. I mean, it, it's just fun. There's more purple. Let's see, let's do some orange. I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to do any black. Maybe. And I do keep going in and rinsing off my brush simply, like I said, because I don't want to contaminate my colors too much. And I do kind of want to leave some of the brown, although I'm not doing too good of a job of leaving the brown. Although I don't know where the stitching will come in. So right now that's what it's looking like. Uh, let's see, I put a little black in here. And maybe a little black up in there. And low. 
I don't even know where the stitching will go. I have a feeling I'm way low as far as stitching goes. So I'm going to move up some stuff, like put some black up in there, and maybe do some green up in here. This is real tie-dye. But with a brush. I felt like painting, but I didn't want to paint. And I thought putting splotches on paper on just fabric would be fun. Oh, some more black up in here. Now you can see I'm getting down to where my fabric is a little dry because I got kind of a solid splotch down here. So if I add a little bit more wet, it's going to make the colors run a little bit. So I'm going to make this a little bit wetter. It's also going to lighten the colors up a little bit. So they'll probably dry lighter than you're seeing. Which is good because, like I said, I'm going to stitch on top of them anyway. And it's just going to be background. And I want more green in here because, if you haven't heard, green is my favorite color. The water is still fairly clean. And the green is a little dark. I'm not sure what happened down there. Hmm. What happened here? I'll go in and squish it around a little. Move. There you go. Let's put a little darker purple in here. There you go. Look at that. Mmm. Yes. Look at that. Maybe it needs a little bit of that up here. Because it is a fairly dark piece. So anyway, that's just a thought, you know, when you when you do your dyeing, you can, um, I don't know, there is more than one way to color. As a matter of fact, while I'm doing this, I have some other... Talk among yourselves. I have some things over here. Let me get my stuff. Oh, wrong stuff. for these. These weren't really what I was looking for, but these are Derwent Ink Tents. Well, they're actually Neo Color water soluble crayons. Just have to get them open. And they look like crayons. I use a green one. 
but you can actually, but if I color like that, and then I go like this, they're water soluble and they break down like watercolor paint. And they leave really beautiful, rich color. And they're gorgeous. They leave gorgeous color behind. And here's a beautiful purple. Let me see if I pull this down. Look at the intensity of that color. And I can put it exactly where I want it. And once I do this, it's permanent. It's permanent color. It'll heat sap. I haven't used it on fabric before. I've used it. So it's kind of a first for me. But anyway, you know what? I think I want to lighten this a little bit. I think. Oops. I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow in here. Okay. All right, so anyway, I'm going to dry this up. I will um, take a picture and then I am going to um, do an update video. I'm going to start my double double and just add this clip in. So thanks for watching. I'll be back. Hi and welcome. Let's hope this goes well. I hope everyone's had a good week or so. I know I have. I've been enjoying um, Hashtag for Halloween and a few other stitches. It's been a little rough with migraines and stuff, but other than that, it's been okay. Um, I have a little clip that I started with and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I did get some other stitching done, although I have to admit it was a little bit rough. And I got some stitching done and I had to rip it out. And I realized I screwed it up again and I had to make an adjustment. But I'll show you that in a little bit. First, um, let's, uh, I'll show you some stuff I've worked on. Uh, I'll start with my stitching journal. There's a little sticker of my Wally kind of and I will show you I've got uh, October it shows some of my stitching that I've done so my last first two video was video number 50 and that was on October 10th can't believe I, that this is 51 uh, and the first Thing that I did was on October 11th and it was actually a new start. I've had lots of new starts this month and I was really happy to start this and I can thank Kay for this um, because she's been working on this and she's made great progress on it. And it's the Stony Creek Oh Holy Night. And hers was looking so beautiful. And I just love the nativity. So I ordered it. I think I got mine at 123 Stitch. And I hand dyed some 
Ada, myself, and they did it in some beautiful shades of royal purple because what else would I do the nativity in? Let me see if I can find the front or the back or whatever. And I started in the middle and I don't know which way is up. Not that it matters at this point because I haven't got very much done. But that would be one of Mary's sleeves. And that's antique violet and some light purple. And it's going to be beautiful and I'm going to love it. And it's going to take me a long time to do. And I don't care. All I know is I'm going to have a good time doing it. And thank you, Kay. Thank you very much. So I worked on that the 11th and the 12th. And it's all good. Merry Christmas to me. So let's see. That brought me to the 13th. Lucky Friday the 13th. And on Lucky Friday the 13th, I worked on Miss Fortune. Oh, Miss Fortune is in my Wicked Pumpkin Seed bag, project bag that I'm using for all of my hashtag 13 for Halloween projects. And Miss Fortune is a um, prairie schooler. Project that I'm sure everybody rec would recognize now. Lots of people have worked on it. And this is what that looks like. And it's lucky number 13, so what better for Friday the 13th? The dogs are going crazy. Pardon my dogs. Somebody just came home. My daughter making noise. Why not? So here is Miss Fortune. And as you can see, I've changed her colors. And here she is in shades of green. And I've added some other things because I'm crazy that way. I'm even thrown in some PMC metallics. And yes, they're nasty to work with. And a little bit of satin floss. And I like the way she's coming out. I am going to use the browns for her cape and her hat and stuff. But we'll see what else I might want to do. But I do like the way she's coming out. So that's Miss Fortune. And I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. Now we're on to, um, let's see, I worked on Miss Fortune. I worked on her a little bit on the 14th also because I was having a, a good time with her. And then on the 14th, I worked on the, that was set on the 14th was Saturday. So I worked on Witching Hour, which is a hate. And I love this project. Um, and this is Lisa Parker. And it's one of my black cats. It's beautiful. And here is this. It's beautiful. And I got a little bit more of the blue in, and maybe some more of the black. Didn't get very far. I started to get a little confused, so I put it down before I could make a mess of it. But I was having a good time. But like I said, I didn't want to make a mess of it, so I put it down. I did move on though. I didn't stop stitching for the day. I, I went back to um, Halloween Meow and I worked on that for a little bit. And that is an Alessandra, oh, Alessandra Adelaide. Oh my goodness. If I find it. There she is. I 
Alessandra Adelaide, another black cat. And that's what that one looks like. Halloween meow. And that's on another piece of uh, fabric that I dyed myself. Ada. Pretty sure it's Ada. And I worked a little bit up into the cat's head. And that's looking really good. So I'm having fun with my Halloween pieces. Uh, it's a little bit slow going when you have a headache. And I'm always a little bit worried that I'm going to mess things up. So... not to let it stop me though. So that was Saturday. And then on Sunday, I went um, for the hashtag Santa, Santa Sunday with uh, Priscilla and Chelsea. Figure out what I did with Santa. is and that's another prairie schooler that's the 2017 prairie schooler with the polar bear it's the North Pole Santa and I didn't get a lot done on him either I got more of the polar bear whoops polar bear but and the Santa jacket. This is that Davos, Davos fabric. Don't like it, not a fan. Probably won't buy any more of that. But it was worth trying, and like I said, not a fan. Will not buy any more of that. Okay, so that was the 15th. So, let's see. Yeah, that was all I worked on on the 15th. So on the 16th, it was back to um, hashtag 13 for Halloween. And I worked on um, Knock Knock. And let's see. Knock Knock. That's out of the 2011 Just Cross Stitch. And I really like this one. And it's Rats, a pumpkin, another black cat, and a you know, crow or a raven. Whatever you, your predilection is for blackbirds at Halloween. Here we have a lot of very large black crows. So what I did was I hand dyed a lot, a large amount. I cut up a bunch of 14 count um, Ada and I straight stitched around it and then I hand dyed it. And so this is knock knock. This is how far I got. And you can see down in this lower left that's uh, rat feet down there, and then I have the shape of the pumpkin, and then it goes up to where you can see part of the black cat, and the top of the pumpkin is in there, sorry for the crinkling, and then that's the raven, and then the pumpkin stem is in there. So I got quite a bit of that done. I was enjoying that stitch, it was pretty straightforward, and I really liked the way the fabric dyeing worked on that. So that was fun. We may actually get back around to that a little bit. So that was what I worked on on the 16th. Knock, knock. Who's there? Okay. 
bit convincing is. So then Tuesday the 17th, that was actually an open day for me. I hadn't planned on doing um, a hashtag for Halloween that day. I was going to do a new, new Year New Start for Stitch Mania for the 17th. So I did plan on doing a, um, a, a Prairie Schooler, one of the uh, Dachshund starts, because I have my dog Wally, who is part Dachshund, and I did jeans and weenies, and I wanted to do another one of those. I have all of them, I think. So I had, was kind of torn. I didn't know whether I wanted to do Halloweenies or if I wanted to do turkey sausage. I was leaning towards turkey sausage because I, I it's kind of lean, it's kind of like a fall Thanksgiving one, and my granddaughters both call my dog Wally sausage, and it's a cute. It's a cute pattern. And uh, so I asked them what one they thought I should start and they chose Halloweenies. So I started Halloweenies for New Year, New Start and that's what this one looks like. So, um, let's see. pull that one out of here. Oh, I found the pattern. There it is. For this one, I used a piece of fabric. At one point this year, I belonged to Color and Cotton's uh, Floss Club and their uh, Neutral Fabric Club. And I, then I canceled it. But then I decided that I really liked their fab, her fabric and her floss, so I just reinstated it. But I decided I was going to use the, her fabric for this Halloweenies piece. So the fabric I'm using is um, the July 2017 club piece, and it's a 16 count Ada, and it's neutral, but it's a it's gray and it has pink overtones and it's really really pretty it's it's probably overexposed and kind of washed out on my camera but it's it's really pretty and that's how far i got with jeans and weenies i got part of the fire hydrant put in so it's black kind of a a burnt orange color and it's looking really pretty. And it's going to be a very pretty stitch. And Dina just has finished this one for her sister as one of the gifts for her sister this year. And it came out adorable. And I guess her sister had a dachshund uh, who passed. And she's kind of doing these as a memory for her sister's dachshund. And I guess her sister's dachshund is the, is the dark dappled one. And that's kind of what my Wally looks like, is the dark dappled one. So, which is very sweet. So anyway, that, anyway, that was the 17th. Not um, part of the hashtag 13 for Halloween. That was New Year, New Start. On Stitch Mania. Like I said, lots of new, new starts this month. And then on the 18th was another new start. And that is back in my um, <laughs> let's see if I can find it. There. That is hashtag uh, 13 for Halloween, but it's also Witchy Wednesday. And this is what I worked on. It was Away We Ride. And can you see the house in there? Do you see all those windows in that house? 
Now, if that's the house of the Wicked Witch, usually Wicked Witches have some pretty nosy neighbors. See all those windows in that house? Seriously, how many windows does a Wicked Witch really want? <laughs> No. <laughs> but I stitched them. And I'm changing the colors. So I, this is just hand dyed, or coffee dyed, I should say. Ada, that I did myself. And so far, this is how far I've gotten. And I am changing up the colors in this one. And the house right now, the filled in colors inside I'm doing with color and cottons fairy ring if I can get past all the glare so I thought that was really pretty and I really like the way that looks and then put it down for a second it's going to take me two hands um, I don't have I don't think I have any gentle arts I haven't started collecting those yet but around the windows for variegation around the window trim I'm using DMC 4000 and if you can see it's kind of bluey greeny gray um, it's got a beautiful variegation kind of like the hand dyed flosses and, I mean, it's right on par with a lot of the nice hand-dyed flosses that are out there. And the, the color that is the outline of those windows is also the main color in the crow's wings, the big crow's wings. And I think it's going to be a really nice color in those wings. So, that'll be really pretty. And the color that I'm going to use inside the windows which is like already in the attic windows and I already have some in the long window here is number 4072 it's this variegated DMC floss so DMC has got some nice variegated flosses out there to use so that that's what I'm going to use in Away We Ride so, and that's what I did on the 18th. And I left yesterday as an open day for me to pick, you know, whatever I might want to do. And to be honest, I didn't feel good yesterday at all. To the point where I thought maybe I was coming down with the flu. Hasn't been a good time here lately, health-wise, I don't think. Not sure why. Anyway, um, so I didn't really stitch yesterday, but I thought about a lot of stuff, about doing stuff. And um, so I looked at stuff. It's always fun to look at stuff and maybe make plans for other times. And now I'm just trying to put stuff away so I don't have too big of a mess to try to put back together and not be able to find things the next time I want to use it. So anyway, that clip that I showed when I first started earlier this, this morning, around 9 o'clock, it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon now, I showed you that I had gotten out my dye and I hand painted fabric that I had coffee stained and then I was going to stitch. Let me show you what I did. Just got to put some stuff, move stuff out of my way. Okay. You ready? I don't know if I'm ready. Okay. So I told you I was going to do double double, but I wanted it to be a little different. But I had coffee dyed, some fabric, and then I got my dye out. Okay, so I stitched. Started with the
started with the cauldron. Right? Got all that 3371 in. And was off by a stitch. Couldn't fudge it. Because it was on the edge. So I sat and it took me an hour to rip it all out. So I ripped it all out. And then I put it back in. And then I went a line too far. So I thought, okay, so there's like a thing of flames. So there's only like one up here and one up here. So let's just count in and we'll just put it, you know, put the one little X in. We can do that. We can fudge it. So, okay, I'll fudge it. I'll put a gray X in here and a gray X in here and it'll be okay because it's gray, right? I got three quarters of the flames in, in gray. It's not gray, it's orange. I don't feel well. I shouldn't stitch when I don't feel well. <laughs> but I fudged it. This is what it looks like. The color is a little washed out, but that's what the color looks like. And it's, I put beads on it. That's what the cauldron looks like. And that's what the hand painted tie dye looks like on the fabric. But you can't really tell that I put gray underneath those beads. <laughs> I hope the rest of October can be a little bit kinder <laughs> than this part of October has been. <laughs> you can tell I'm working on witches. And I wouldn't call them witches. <laughs> anyway, thank you for spending time with me. If you've lasted this long, thank you for bearing with me. I appreciate your time. I appreciate sincerely your comments and your friendships. I appreciate your likes, your subscriptions, please. Thank you so much. I above all love this community. Um, I appreciate the place to share my craft and my needlework. God bless you all. Until next time, happy stitching, happy crafting, be colorful, stay kind.